What's going on guys? John Elder here from CodyMe.com and in this video, we're going to build an actual word dictionary with Kinter and Python. All right, guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to build a dictionary for Kinter. And I don't mean like a Python dictionary. I mean an actual word dictionary. We're going to use a module called PyDictionary, which will allow us to enter in words and it will return the definitions of those words. So an actual word dictionary. So this should be pretty cool. So let's head over to our code. But I'm using the Sublime Text Editor in the Git Bash Terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other Kinter videos in this series, over 200, so check that out if you haven't so far. And if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codeb.com where I have dozens of courses with thousands of videos to teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee, which is insanely cheap. So let's take a quick look at what we're going to be building here. Very basic app here. We could type in anything we want, boy, look it up. And that's a noun for a youthful male person, right? We can look up blue and you'll notice there's nouns and there's a bunch of definitions. There's verbs if it happens to have a verb to turn blue. There's adjectives if it happens to have adjectives and they're all listed. And you'll notice we're using a text box here. If you wanted to, you can make, for instance, noun bold or something. I'll leave that to you. We've talked about that in other videos in this series. So you can learn how to do that. And I've just got very basic formatting here. I've put little dashes next to each definition. You could do anything you want. You could use numbers or bullet points or you know, whatever. I just kept it simple on this app. So I've got our basic Kinter starter code that we've always got. I'm calling it dictionary.py. And the first thing we need to do before we do anything else is hip install py dictionary. So I'm gonna head over to my terminal. I'm in my C GUI directory and we just wanna pip install py dictionary. And I've already got it. So it's saying, ah, oh, you've already got it, but for you, it will go ahead and install on your computer. Now we can import that into our app up here at the top. Let's go from Py Dictionary. We want to import Py Dictionary, <laughs> right? So that's how that works. So let's very quickly just build out our GUI here. So at the top, we want a little label frame. So I'm going to call this my label frame. And that's going to be a label frame. We want to put it in root. And we want the text to say, enter a word, something like that. So let's my label frame dot pack this guy onto the screen, give it a pad Y of 20 to push it down the screen a little bit. So inside of that label frame, that little box at the top, we want an entry box where we can type in the word. So I'm gonna call this my entry because I'm very original. And this is gonna be an entry box. We wanna put it in my label frame, right? And let's give this a font of say Helvetica and a size of like 28, make it nice and big. And then we want my entry, now I'm going to dot grid this instead of the normal dot pack. Let's put it in row zero column equals zero because I want the entry box and the button to be side by side. And it's just sort of easier to grid those. And I'm also, while I'm at it, let's give this a pad X of like 10 and a pad Y of also 10, push it down the screen and over inside the little box. So that looks good. Now we need a button next to that. I'm going to call it my button. This is going to be a button. We want to put it in my label frame, of course. And then we want the text to say, I don't know, look up, something like that. And let's give this a command of look up. We haven't created that function yet. We will in just a second. Same thing with this button. Let's my button dot grid this guy. And we want to put it in row equals zero, column equals one. So it's over just next to the entry box. And I'm also going to give this a pad X of 10 to kind of push it over from the entry box a little bit more. Okay, so underneath that, we want a text box. So I'm going to call this my text, and it's going to be a text box. We want to put it in root, not in our label frame like the other things. We just want it in the root. And I'm going to give this a height of like 20 and a width of like 65. And remember with text boxes, the height and the width isn't pixel length, it's character length. So whatever our font size is for our text, which we're just using the default, that's how big the height and width will be relative to that size, right? So we're saying 20 characters in height and 65 characters in width. And I also want to wrap this. So I want the words to wrap as word. So this will wrap words on another line. So it doesn't like chop words in half as it, you know, goes to the next line when it runs out of space in the box. So, okay, let's go my underscore text dot pack. And we can pack this because it's outside of this label frame. Everything inside the label frame, we're gridding, but everything outside, I'm gonna go ahead and pack. 
And I'm just gonna give this a pad Y of like 10 to push it down from that box a little bit. Okay, so let's create this lookup command real quick before we move forward here. Let's just define lookup. And for now, I'm gonna pass. So let's save this and make sure that looks okay. Head back over to our terminal. And let's go Python dictionary.py. When we do, we see we've got this nice label frame. We've got an entry box inside of here. We've got a button and we've got a text box here. So you could also put a scroll bar in your text box if you wanted to. It will scroll without one, uh, but you could add that if you wanted to. I've done that lots of times in the playlist. You could watch those videos if you're interested in learning how to do that. So our GUI looks good. Now we just need to build out the functionality using Py Dictionary. So how do we do that? Well, inside of this lookup, before we do anything, I think I want to clear the text box. So if we look up several words, every time we look up a new word, we want to delete the old one from the text box, right? So we know how to do this from other videos. We could just call my underscore text dot delete. And we want to pass in from the position of one till the end. So everything in the text box from the top of it at 1.0 all the way down to the end, that will delete. That looks good, piece of cake. So now, Let's look up a word. So to do that, I'm going to create a variable called dictionary. You can call it anything you want, doesn't matter. And this is going to be a pi dictionary, oops, misspelled dictionary, a pi dictionary instance. So this is basically initializing our pi dictionary thing up here, right? Okay, so now we've got this, we can reference it with the word dictionary. So let's say we want to get a definition. And this is just a random variable name I've created call it anything you want. You could call it X if you wanted to. It doesn't matter at all, but we're looking up a definition. So I'm going to call this definition and we're going to call our dictionary dot meaning. And we could pass into there anything we want. Well, we've got our my underscore entry dot get that will get whatever we typed in our my entry box. It will pass it into this meaning, which will then pass that into this, which will then go look it up and return the meaning. So now we've got this definition we can just sort of put it in our text box. So let's add definition to text box. So we could just call my underscore text dot insert. And we want to insert this at the end of the box. What do we want to insert definition? So let's save this, we're gonna to have to still do some work on this. But let's just take a look and see what's being returned when we call this thing. So let's head back over to our terminal, run this guy again. So here I'm going to look up house. When you do, you see, oh, we're getting this weird thing. So if you really look at this, this is a dictionary because you could tell by the squiggly lines there, right? Inside of here, we've got several instances. We've got a key with noun, and the value of that is a Python list with all kinds of stuff in it, right? We've also got another key, verb, with, again, a list of things in it. So there's no adjectives for house, but if there was an adjective, you would see the word adjective, and then it would have a Python list of whatever the adjectives were. So we really need to parse this thing out. And we can do that pretty easily because we've got key value pairs, key value pairs. So each item, noun, verb, adjective, whatever, is a key value pair. The value is a Python list. So we can just sort of parse this using basic Python. And of course, if you're not very good with Python dictionaries, you could grab my book, Intro to Python Programming. There you go on Amazon. <laughs> Uh, just go to Amazon, type in Python Elder and check that out if you want to learn more about Python dictionaries in a very basic introductory way. So let's come down here. And instead of just adding this in there, let me comment that out. We need to do some looping in things, right? So let's go find keys and values in our definition. So let's pull this down a little bit. So let's go for key value in our definition dot items. All right, so that will take that dictionary and it will sort of split it into these keys and values and we can reference the key and the value, right? So first let's print out that key. So if it's a noun, we wanna print out noun. So that underneath that, we see that's a list of the nouns. If it's verb, we wanna print out verb and then underneath that will be the list of the verbs. So we could do that in the same way. We could just sort of grab this guy right here. But instead of putting in definition, we wanna put in the key. And let's also add some line breaks. So I'm just gonna put a plus sign here. And then we can just put the slash in a couple of times that will add line breaks, new lines, in stands for new line under each of those things. So, okay, that looks good. So let's say, uh, put the key header in text box, right? 
So that will do that. So now we've got the values, that Python list that's after, for instance, the noun, the list of all the nouns. So we need to loop through that and uh, put all those onto the screen. So let's go for values in value. Because remember the value we're getting right there, right? We just want to do the same thing, insert them into the text box. But instead of this being key, let's create an F string here. And I want to put a little dash next to each one. So dash, and then we can pass in our values. And then also let's put a couple of line breaks. So that should do the trick. So let's go ahead and save this and run it. Make sure we didn't mess that up. Dictionary.py. And again, let's type in house. Uh oh, we did mess it up. Definition is not defined. Definition. Did I misspell definition? Line 22? Probably. Oh, yeah, I misspelled it right there. <laughs> definition. All right, let's just do that. Uh, yeah, that will work. Okay, head back over here. Try it again. So let's look up house. And boom, we see noun. Down here, we see verb. Underneath each one is, you know, these little dashes. And then the definition. And we're good to go. We can look up blue. That's a noun, a blue color, or pigment. <laughs> That's not a very good definition. What is the definition of blue? A blue color. <laughs> okay. Blue clothing. Uh, that's weird. We've got verb to turn blue. We've got adjectives filled with melancholy and despondency, right? <laughs> Whatever. So very simple, very easy, and, uh, yeah, and a fun little app. So that's all for this video. If you liked, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codeview.com. We can use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off memberships. That's access to all my courses, over 50 courses, thousands of videos, and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 150,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codeview.com, and I'll see you in the next video.